Welcome to Chamber Chat. I am John Terry, President and CEO of the Boulder Chamber. And today is a somewhat somber, but yet celebratory day as we acknowledge the departure for, of my friend Scott Sternberg, who has been our BEC, Boulder Economic Council Executive Director, and our Associate Vice President for Economic Vitality at the Boulder Chamber for the past three years. Um, and he is moving on to a position that is so sophisticated at the University of Colorado that I'm gonna have to have him explain it to you in just a bit. Um, but I will say that it's been three years of amazing work on behalf of our businesses and our economy here in Boulder. Um, and so we just wanted to have a final chat with Scott um, in this uh, role at the Boulder Chamber to discuss just sort of what he's experienced, um, his new position, a little bit about that, and then also just a sense of what he sees going forward for uh, Boulder's economy. So Scott, welcome back to Chamber Chat. Thank you. You know, I remember that when you first started at the Boulder Chamber, we hired you during COVID, um, you and I had a Chamber Chat conversation and we had to be online um, because we could not interact in person due to that COVID virus. <laughs> um, but it's fun to bookend your career here at the Boulder Chamber um, with a Chamber Chat conversation. And I'll just start off by asking you, um, so you've now been in this role for three years. Um, you came to it with a wealth of experience. I mean, both um, as a president of a large uh, international corporation, um, the US subsidiary here in, um, in the United States, um, but then also a lot of involvement in the Boulder economy, the, the federal labs, et cetera. Um, so you already had a sense of the Boulder economy, but I'm wondering just you, as you're leaving, so what is, are your impressions of the Boulder economy? Um, what lessons um, are you taking away from the experience um, in the role you had at the Boulder Chamber? Yeah. Well, great. Um, well, appreciate this somber and celebratory, especially since it's Halloween day, because you could argue that uh, that is exactly how you define Halloween. Exactly. Somber and celebratory. Right? Yeah. Uh, but no, it's great to be back. I remember when uh, we first chatted, we both had masks on and we were online, right? It's kind of indicative of the times. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um, you know, from my position, um, what I've learned is, you know, I would say diversity breeds resiliency, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I say that in, in the context of the diversity of the industries, uh, the business types, the scale and scope of the businesses that we, we have here. Um, when I did join um, in the middle of the pandemic, you know, it was such a stressor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we remember how everyone was immediately, you know, thrown off guard. And there was no book to read about how to manage during the pandemic. Yeah. Leaders were struggling for, for guidance and benchmarking across each other. Um, and it was just absolutely a, a, an unbelievable time. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Boulder's economy, um, we have six key industries, you know, ranging from biosciences to clean tech to aerospace. And, um, and the outdoor industry and uh, natural foods mm -hmm. um, that creates that diversity of industry within the community. And so we're extremely fortunate to have so many key industries that contribute to our economy. Yep. Um, and then you, you layer in the visitors uh, that come in and tourism that relates to the hospitality and the retail sales sector. Um, it's just a, a highly diverse ecosystem that yep. supports that. And, I think what we learned, uh, we probably knew it was there um, before the pandemic, but with such a stressor where everybody was caught off guard, um, I think that the diversity of all of the different scopes and scales of businesses really got that resilience for us. And we were able to kind of plow through the mud of the pandemic. Um, and I would say, you know, we came out of it probably stronger um, than we had some of the um, trends that we saw around the adoption of technology, especially digital technology and techniques were already happening, but those were accelerated possibly 10 or uh, uh, even further uh, years in advance. And so you know, we were already coming down that path. And so we were evolving and we just maybe accelerated our evolution. Yeah. I would say the other uh, aspect, when you look at nine, I think it's 97% of our businesses have less than 50 employees. Mm -hmm. right? So we have an incredibly strong small business sector um, and small businesses, by definition, have to or can or want to pivot from time to time mm -hmm. right, to be competitive. And so inherent in our culture, whenever there's a stressor like a pandemic, like an economic downturn that we're potentially facing now, um, you have this resilient and this creative sort of small business mentality across mm -hmm. all of our businesses. 
uh, and industries that allow us to kind of adapt as we go. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, that relates to then maybe just the, the, the next thing that I have to ask you, and that is, you know, where are you going? And when I think about part of the resiliency that you, you referred to, the creativity, the innovation, it comes from that keystone to our economy, the university. Mm -hmm. um, and so, ironically, um, you are now moving uh, to the university. I, I've been saying to folks, it's the perfect marriage <laughs> of your technical, uh, you know, yeah. scientific side and now your, your business acumen. Um, but maybe just if you could describe the role, maybe you can tell the people uh, what the position is because I couldn't explain it. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, just maybe what, how that might relate to opportunities for the city of Boulder economy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pan back a little bit because one thing that you said is uh, you know the research economy, the innovation economy in Boulder is certainly you know spurred on by the university, but it's much much broader than that. As you know, um, over a billion dollars of economic uplift come from the federal laboratories alone. Yeah. Um, and uh, just last month, um, CU released its extramural funding uh, figures, and that is a number that's just north of 680 million. So that's federal funding coming in for research and development. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't even have the multipliers of the uh, economic uplift, um, which we, we know are, are great since that money comes in. Yeah. And so, you know, looking at the research and the innovation economy that is Boulder, mm -hmm. um, I argue that is also, to my earlier point, um, that creates that resilience. Mm -hmm. That is uh, typically government funding that is least or, or less susceptible to volatility in the markets because they're government funding, government grants, large authorization bills that fund you know, those research programs. And so part of our resilience through the pandemic and through the recession is this constant feed of government dollars coming into our economy. Mm -hmm. um, so to that point, uh, the federal government has recognized this new, I won't say it's new science, but it's a new application of what has been um, uh, basic physics for you know, over a century. Uh, as a national priority. Mm -hmm. And so this is the quantum initiative, as it's called. Um, there's a lot of names for it, but in, uh, about five years ago, Congress passed an act that uh, wanted to put the United States in a leadership position in this quantum technology. Okay. And so at the federal level, uh, obviously that's a, a nod to say that we need to maintain our leadership in, in this particular uh, application. Um, and a lot of that technology is born right here in Boulder four Nobel Prize winners in quantum technology, um, multiple spin-ups. I believe we have the highest density of uh, quantum computing companies in the nation. Wow. Um, and so we are at the epicenter of this quantum computing um, movement, if you will, or, or trend. Um, so what is a quantum computer? Yeah. Um, a quantum computer is uh, very different. I'm supposed to ask the questions, <laughs> but that was going to be a question. Yeah. So a computer encodes um, uh, information in a one and zero and has specific mathematics that uh, calculates um, you know, whatever problem that you put forward to it. Um, and that creates a relatively predictable scaling factor of commute computers. So if you've heard of Moore's Law, it follows a very predictable pattern. And so just by sheer horsepower and technology, you can increase computing power uh, over time. Um, a quantum computer encodes information in what's called a qubit or multiple bits of information in that same unit. Mm -hmm. And so it allows um, highly sophisticated and highly complicated problems to be solved relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And so it's essentially the next generation of computing technology. And it is uh, being applied to biological sciences for drug discovery, navigation in the aerospace community, uh, cybersecurity and secure networks, um, and a host of other sensing applications. So for instance, there's one great application where when you breathe out, um, if you have COPD, if you have COVID, if you have some sort of asthma, uh, there's a molecular signature in your breath that comes out of your lungs. Mm -hmm. It's so faint and so small, it's less than 1% of the volume of the air that you breathe out. Wow. And these sensors can detect that and show a predisposition for one of these diseases. So mm -hmm. it is literally, you know, excuse the part, it's a quantum leap, if you will, in yeah. technology, uh, but it is essentially that. It's really leapfrogging, uh, has the potential of leapfrogging uh, current technology in so many different areas. Mm -hmm. Hence the national focus on that, hence the statewide focus on that. And we've been fortunate enough that the Economic Development Administration put forward a grant uh, to create these tech hubs in various regions. Uh, we anticipate either five to 10 uh, regions around the country to, to be awarded this uh, uh, distinction. And we are in the final running of 31 here as a state in this quantum uh, 
on the field. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. So my, my role at the university is to essentially um, be in that inner space between the science, the government, and the private industry, mm -hmm. uh, and make sure that uh, they're all talking and they're all coordinating with each mm -hmm. other so that we, A, maintain our discovery and our leadership uh, as, a, as a research entity, but also are uh, driving an economic engine that uh, quantum technology will ultimately fuel. And would you say that um, Boulder is in a particularly strong position to capitalize from a business standpoint, economic standpoint, on this uh, quantum technology? Um, absolutely. Uh, the research that's going on between what's called at JILA, which is a joint institute between the National Institute of Standard and Technology and CU Boulder, mm -hmm. it's been around for over 60 years, uh, has a long history of spinning some of these great technologies out into the market. And mm -hmm. where do they come? They come through CS, uh, CU Ventures into uh, the local marketplace and ultimately grow in place. So companies like um, uh, Colt Quanta came directly out of the university mm -hmm. and is now one of the uh, largest um, uh, quantum computing companies uh, that's around. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we are at this epicenter of technology being spun out and then ultimately being um, proven out in the private sector. So exciting. Um, well, then maybe that's a good launching point for just my final inquiry here. Um, as you're getting ready to march out the door and I, um, or across the street, I should say. Um, so I just, you know, as you then reflect back and think, okay, based on what I've seen of our economy, the resiliency, now it's seeing the opportunity, just at least in one industry field, um, what do you see forward for our economy? What uh, vision do you have for economic vitality of um, Boulder and the inner surrounding region? Well, I'm going to start with a nod to you and the work that the Chamber does. Um, it starts with convening and mm -hmm. convening conversations. Um, and uh, I would say in my reflection of three years, I've seen just countless conversations, how people have showed up, dis desperate um, viewpoints and backgrounds and experiences, mm -hmm. but you know what happens uh, over time is uh, essentially a consensus and everyone's voice is heard and considered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that gives Boulder its uh, staying powder Staying power, power, not powder, <laughs> staying power, um, and, uh, awesome. and and really create some of the great programs that we, we have here. So in effect, you know, as the community discusses it, we, we have highly engaged community members, as you know, and it's fantastic to hear the conversations. And once we go through that process, I think the products that we get are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And so, um, you know, some of the work that we've been able to advance in our you know, transportation conversations, in our housing conversations, in our sub-community plan developments um, are just absolutely next generation where we should be going. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, uh, um, I'm optimistic that that conversation will continue mm -hmm. and as issues arise that will you know, affect Boulder's future, our community will be engaged and making these decisions for, uh, for the long term. Um, and I think that uh, what I'm, I'm most engaged or most excited about is is really two things. Every conversation now about economic development includes a sustainability component, mm -hmm. a, a climate component, a sustainability, a zero waste, whatever you want. Every conversation about development includes that. Yeah. My second thing, which is probably most important, is every economic development conversation uh, is founded in the diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion of the workforce. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that uh, the federal government is stipulated through these federal grants that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. It's being considered at every level of economic development and uh, business development. And, um, and as we know, a diverse workforce um, increases productivity and uh, longevity with the employee base. Mm -hmm. So it is such an exciting thing to see that you know, from a, from a planet-friendly and from an employee-friendly you know, perspective, these conversations are now including both of those components. And I think that bodes very, very well for both of future. Yeah, amen. I mean, I'll just say this, that you yourself have been a catalyst for those conversations, um, bringing to our economic vitality goals this uh, emphasis on sustain environmental sustainability, social uh, equity and diversity, and um, their core values of the Boulder Chamber. I'm excited to see you bring those forward in your new work. Um, but I just will uh, conclude by just saying it's just been a, such a pleasure working with you. Um, you are somebody who brings great analytical skills, 
um, to the problems that we're facing. Um, so often I'm you know, shooting from the hip and then I look to you and you're saying, uh, you know, well, if we look, step back a little bit and actually look at all sides. Um, <laughs> John, calm down. Um, but I'll just say that it just, um, you know, just as both uh, somebody who comes with a science background um, and just a very great uh, that personal values, it's been a pleasure working with you and just uh, propelling our economy forward through very difficult times. So I'm so thankful for everything you've given to our organization um, and to the Boulder economy and our um, our businesses and just very excited to uh, see what you do at the university and know that um, we'll be partnering I'm sure um, as we go forward. Well that's very kind and I, I think uh, you know our partnership has been great you need you know all kinds of different perspectives personalities and, and working relationships to make things happen so thank you for the opportunity of um, spending a little bit of time here albeit only only three years yeah <laughs> I feel like a millennial when I say it's three years that I'm gone but uh, it's uh, it's been quite a, a tumultuous time that we work but uh, yeah. again you know the organization that is the Boulder Chamber sits at the core of so many of these convening conversations that are so important for our economy and you're right in the middle of it so it's been a pleasure all right pleasure all right, so we'll say sayonara, but uh, not forever to our great friend Scott Sternberg. Um, and we'll say see you next time on Chamber Chat.